Let's take a look now at the intervals of concavity and points of inflection. We just got done finding the derivative of our original function, which told us that the sign of the derivative told us if the original function was increasing or decreasing. But now I want to know if the derivative function is increasing or decreasing, which can tell us if the slope is getting steeper or less steep. And to do that, of course, we would have to find the derivative of the derivative or the second derivative. So we're going to find the second derivative. And what that does is in terms of our original function, it's going to tell us if we have something curving upward or curving downward, which is called concavity. So in this case, if it's, if it's curving upward, or curving downward. So this is concave up and this is concave down. So again, we're going to find the second derivative for that. And if you have a point, just like we looked at with critical numbers, where a critical number is the only place where a function can change from increasing to decreasing, now we want to find the points at which a function can change from concave up to concave down. And those are at possible points of inflection, which is where f double prime of x is equal to zero. Now that's where it can change. That doesn't mean it does change there. If it does change, it's called a point of inflection. The steps that we're going to follow are going to look a lot like the steps we did in our last video when we learned how to find intervals of increase or decrease. So we're first going to see that it's continuous over an interval. We're going to locate the possible points of inflection by setting the second derivative equal to zero, and of course, where f double prime is undefined, or where f is undefined. And then we're gonna divide the domain into intervals based on those possible points of inflection and choose a test point. If you have f double prime of x is less than zero, then f is concave down, and if double prime of x is greater than zero, which of course means the slope is increasing at a greater rate, then it is concave up. And then, of course, anytime the function is equal to zero, that's where the, there's a possible point of inflection. So this will all make a lot more sense when we do an example. You should recognize this function from video 3.1, where we talked about intervals of increase or decrease. And now we're going to do the same for concavity. So what we're going to do is first we're going to say that f of x is continuous from negative infinity to infinity because it's polynomial. And then, oops, let me change colors just for fun. Then we're going to find f prime of x, which is 3x squared minus 3x. And don't simplify that one because now I have to find f double prime of x, which of course is the derivative of the derivative. So this derivative is now 6x and then minus three. Now, if this one you want to reduce, feel free. This is three times two x minus one. Next step is to determine anywhere the function is undefined or where f double prime of x is equal to zero. So zero equals three times two x minus one. So my only possible, possible point of inflection is positive one half. So we're going to do this exactly like we did before. I'm going to take the interval of negative infinity to positive one half and positive one half to positive infinity. And I'm going to choose a point to plug back into the derivative, second derivative function. So let's choose zero. If I plugged in zero, I would get negative one times three or negative three, which is negative. And if I plugged in one, I would get two minus one, which is one times three, which is three, which is positive. So I can see that at the point um, one half, and then again, one half what? Well, if I need to find the actual point, where do I plug it? Back into the original function. So one half cubed minus three halves times one half squared. 
this would give me one eighth this would be one fourth so that would be minus three eighths so that's negative two eighths or negative one fourth so there is going to be a point of inflection because we change from negative to positive so the point of inflection is one half comma negative one fourth now we've already graphed this when we found the intervals of increase and decrease but notice right here at one half comma negative one fourth that's where this function increases from concave down and it switches to concave up hold on to your hats because this is going to be a tough one uh, if you're not mentally prepared for this feel free to skip to the next example this one will take us a while the first thing we need to understand is that this is a rational function and when we have a rational function we often have values that are um, not included in our domain so f of x is discontinuous at x equals plus or minus three because at that point the denominator would be zero and that's not okay now the reason this one's going to take us a while is because of the math involved in finding the first and second derivative so again this is the hard part just because it's a lot of work but it's a good review so f prime of x the derivative of f notice we're looking at the quotient rule so we're going to take the denominator or as i say the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the denominator squared and then do a little bit of cleanup it looks like both values in my numerator have a 2x that I can factor out and that leaves me with x squared minus 9 minus x squared minus 1 so x squared minus 9 minus x squared minus 1 and again minus because it's on the outside of the parentheses I have to subtract both terms and then over x squared minus 9 quantity squared do a little bit of cleanup and I can see that the x squareds cancel that gives me negative 10 on the inside so negative 10 times 2x is negative 20x over x squared minus 9 squared now if we were finding intervals of increase decrease obviously I would need that value but I am finding the intervals of concavity so I'm going to power through to find f double prime of x so I'm finding the derivative of the derivative so bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom this one's chain rule 2 times x squared minus 9 to the first and then times 2x and then over the denominator squared x squared minus 9 squared squared or to the fourth now I didn't point this out before but when you're finding a second derivative do your best not to foil out the denominator because you'll see that what's going to happen is one of these factors is going to cancel so in my numerator I have an x squared minus 9 here but I have two of them and I have an x squared minus 9 here just one of them so I'm going to take one of them and factor that out of both terms so for my first term that leaves me with the 1 x squared minus 9 times negative 20 so I'm actually going to go ahead and distribute the negative 20 negative 20 x squared plus 180 and there's that plus sign so now this one has factored out and that leaves me with 20 x times 2 times 2 x so 4 x times 20 x or 80 x squared and then over x squared minus 9 to the fourth and this is where that one factor is going to cancel and I'm going to simplify the top to 60 x squared plus 180 or 60 times the quantity of x squared plus 3 over x squared minus 9 to the third that is my second derivative now I need to use that to find where the second derivative is equal to 0 so 0 equals and then really I don't care about the denominator because I would multiply each side by the denominator so when does 60 
times x squared plus 3 equals 0. Well, if I divide by 60, that gives me 0 equals x squared plus 3, or negative 3 equals x squared, which obviously what's going to happen is we're going to have a, an imaginary number, and so there's no point of inflection. No points of inflection. Now, I still have to find the intervals, which would be negative infinity to, uh, sorry, to negative 3, negative 3 to positive 3, and positive 3 to infinity. Again, not because I'm going to have a point of inflection, but because I still want to be able to find the intervals on which it's concave up and concave down. So it can change at the points negative 3 and positive 3, even though there's not a point of inflection. So if I plug in, say, negative 5, again, as you're doing this, the best idea is just to look at the signs. So if I plug in, say, negative 5, I'm going to end up with a positive value in my numerator, and negative 5 would give me a positive 25 minus 9, so that's positive, positive. So I'm going to end up with a positive value. If I plug in something between negative 3 and positive 3, like 0, I would get positive value on the top, and then 0 minus 9, or negative 9 cubed, which is still negative. So that's going to give me a negative. And then if I plug in, say, positive 5, that's going to give me a positive in my numerator and a positive in my denominator. So even though there's no point of inflection, we can see that the concavity does change. So let's take a look. At negative 3, we already knew the function was undefined. And at positive 3, the function's undefined. So even though concavity changes, this is concave up, this is concave down, and this is concave up. But there are no points of inflection because these values are not part of the domain. For this last question, I'm asking you to do quite a bit. So I'm really putting together everything you've learned in 3, 1 through 3, 4 to find the extrema, intervals of increase, decrease, critical numbers, points of inflection, intervals of concavity, etc. So do your best on this. Um, press pause when you're ready. Press play to see how you did. So first thing is I'm going to say that f of x is continuous everywhere. So there are no points at which this function is undefined. Now I'm going to find f prime of x f prime of x gives me 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. I'm going to set that equal to 0, and I'm going to take a 6 out of everything, x squared minus x minus 2. And then I'm looking for numbers that multiply to 2 with a difference of 1. So I'm going to say x minus 2, x plus 1, which means my critical numbers are x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. Now I'm going to set up my little intervals down here. So I'm going to go from negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 2, 2 to infinity. And I'm just going to plug in values again, into the derivative function. And when you plug it into the derivative function, you can plug it into this function, or you can plug it into this function. It's really up to you. I'm going to go ahead and use this one right here, um, because then I can say whether each part is positive or negative. So if I use, say, negative 2, that would give me a negative times a negative, and that would give me a positive. If I used, say, 0, that would give me a negative times a positive, which is a negative. And if I used, say, 3, I would get a positive times a positive, which is a positive. So, so far, I have found the intervals of increase and decrease and the critical numbers. I haven't found the extrema yet. Um, but I can because this goes from increasing to decreasing. So this is going to be a max. And my max is going to be at negative 1, comma. And then I'm going to have to take negative 1 and plug it back into the original function. So negative 1, and then that would be negative 2, 
and then minus 3, and then plus 12 plus 5. So that's going to give me 12, negative 1, 12. And then I'm going to have a min, again, because it goes from decreasing to increasing. That's that first derivative test. That's a minimum at 2, comma, and now I have to plug in 2. So 2 to the third is 8 times 2 is 16, minus 3 times 4, so minus 12, minus 24 plus 5. That's going to give me 4, negative 20 plus 5, negative 15. So now I have found my extrema. And what's next? I have to find the points of inflection and intervals of concavity. So now I'm going to find f double prime of x. f double prime of x is going to give me, and again, when I'm finding the second derivative, use this format rather than this one, just to make things simple. So I'm going to get 12x minus 6. So that gives me 0 equals, and then I'm going to take a 6 out, so that's 2x minus 1. So possible points of inflection is just x equals 1 half. So now I'm going to take negative infinity to 1 half and 1 half, wow, I'm sorry, 1 half to infinity. And again, when I'm plugging this back in, I'm plugging it back into either of the second derivative functions that I came up with. Um, so let's plug in 0. 0 would fall into this first interval. So that would give me um, 0 minus 6 or negative 6. And if I plug in, say, 1, it would give me 12 minus 6, which is 6, which is positive. So now I have my intervals of concavity. Now I need my point of inflection because obviously um, the inflection did change from negative to positive. So that's going to be at 1 half comma, and now I have to plug in 1 half. So that's 2 times 1 eighth, which is 1 fourth, minus 3 times 1 fourth, and then minus 12 times a half, so minus 6 plus 5. So this gives me negative 1 half, and then minus 1, so negative 3 halves. Again, do your mental math the way you want. You might be smarter than me and be able to do it without writing anything down, or maybe not quite as smart. Let's take a look now. We have negative 1, 12. That is, in fact, where we found our max. We have 2, negative 15. That is, in fact, where we found our minimum. And we have a point of inflection at 1 half, comma, negative 3 halves. So I didn't do a good job of pointing that out here. But it would be somewhere in here where it's going from concave down to concave up. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the second derivative.